Life by Divine with Sue Tome fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue Deme, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue Deme. Welcome to Life by Divine. I'm so excited to be here with you once again. I, I actually really look forward to these episodes and to share this space and this time with you and to pour the messages that are coming from my heart. I was just talking to Cameron, the producer, and I'm, I was talking about having guests on the show, but I'm just like, I just have so much to say. I just have so much to fill this time that we have together with. And I, the, the messages that are coming through me feel such a sense of importance and timeliness. I, I feel like it's divine right timing for, for these messages to come through and people are ready to hear it. And I know that if you're here and you're listening, you're ready to hear this today. I'm going to be talking about healing your subconscious mind and stopping self-sabotage instantly. And I've been talking about the ego game of opposites for a couple of weeks now and i want to go deeper into it but i'm also seeing some really clever ways that the ego is coming in to prevent people from hearing integrating and using this tool and that includes confusion procrastination avoidance there's a whole bunch of things people are reaching out to me and and they're really having a, an interesting time and the ego is just having a heyday and getting into these real, even temper tantrums. So that's part of the evolution of the ego. That's what I talk about in my book. The ego will change and shift and manipulate and do whatever it possibly can to keep you from experiencing the shift to keep you from healing and aligning with love. The ego is trying to protect you and keep you safe. So what it's doing is feeding you fear, embedding fear in any possible way it can. And one of those ways it likes to do that is it likes to have temper tantrums, it likes to create confusion, it likes to create this feeling of procrastination or avoidance and it loves to use distraction to keep you from learning something. What it really wants you to do is quit before the miracle. And the reason for that is because the miracle is alignment with love. The miracle is your true alignment with the truth of who you are, but ultimately with love. And the ego wants nothing to do with that because when you are in alignment with love, the ego dissolves. The one thing I'll just say, I'm going to touch on this. I'm going to just share the idea. I just want you to try on the idea. Open your mind wide. Imagine your mind as wide open as it possibly can be. So many people are chasing the idea of awakening. And so many people are chasing the idea of enlightenment. Like it's, it's something out there that they can't quite reach or grasp or understand. A lot of people believe that when they become awake or when they are enlightened when they are highly conscious or consciously awake fully awake then then what when then when i'm that way then i'll feel better then i'll be at peace then i'll be happy then i'll be whatever you can fill in the blank that's that when then syndrome one of the ego personas in the book the evolution of the ego is when then zen when i'm when, when things shift, when I'm enlightened, when, I'm, when I arrive at this place, of, uh, then I'll be at peace. When then, it's, it's conditional. But what if you were at peace right now? What if you could be enlightened in this moment? When we are in alignment with love, when we are in alignment with our spirit, when we are living life by divine, in that very moment, where the divinity is flowing through us and we're not in our head thinking about it, it's just happening, you are enlightened. You are awake. You have arrived, if you want to look at it that way. 
not that there's a destination to arrive to. In that moment, the ego is dissolved. There is only love and that force and that stream of love, the divinity that's running through you, as you, with you, one with you. That's living oneness. In these experiences of living oneness, and that's where people want to wake up to the idea of oneness and stay awake. And, and yes, there are people out there that are, are awake in living in oneness fully, wholly, and completely. And then there are others that kind of go in and out of oneness, go in and out of that awakening. This is more of the common thread. This is more of the common path. People have a gradual awakening. Most humans have a gradual awakening to the truth of who they are. And when you can accept that and stop chasing the idea that I just want to wake up and then I'm done, even when you wake up, you're actually not done. So that's, that's an, an illusion too. It, it just changes. The experience changes. The experience of life changes. The experience of being human changes. When I'm fully awake, when I'm in alignment with love, when I'm channeling, when I'm a living life by divine, when I'm in that space, there is no fear. Fear does not exist. The ego does not exist. Thoughts do not exist. In my mind, they're just words that come and translate into my voice. When I'm in my humanness, when I bounce back into my humanness, then the ego's present. If I go back and forth between the two, it's like a light switch. Ego, no ego. Ego, no ego. Fear, love. It's like a light switch, on or off. There's no dim. There's no dimmer. It's on or off. You're either in alignment with the ego or you're in alignment with love and with spirit as your teacher. It's one or the other. Now, when we are in our humanness and we can allow the divine to embody our humanness and to embrace our humanness and to animate our humanness, then we're in full alignment. And the ego doesn't need to be, to be present. There is no space for it, no need for it, no need for fear. Fear dissolves, the ego dissolves. Now, how do we get there? That's the question. That's the question of the day. That's what we're going to be talking about today is looking at how do we heal our subconscious mind and stop that self-sabotaging, those self-sabotaging moments where the ego takes over. How do we shift that? So it helps to imagine your mind as a computer. And if you imagine your conscious mind as the part of the computer that holds the software. So in the conscious mind, you've got your, your, all the programs that can open your documents. You know, like your Outlook, your Word, your Excel, all those kinds of programs that open up. So the apps that open up the documents and open up the, the programs for you. That's your conscious mind. You can see what's running. So if you look at your computer, you can see what's running. You can see what's happening when you look at your computer and you open it up. You see what, what tabs you have open. You can see what programs you have open. I know some people have a lot of tabs open, like a hundred tabs open on the top. I try and go with max 10, but you know, sometimes they, they get a little out of hand. So that's your conscious mind. We have this software that we're aware of. And what that means is that we can actually hear the thoughts that are happening in our head. That's our conscious thoughts. Our conscious mind. The subconscious mind is the thoughts that are running in the background that we don't hear, that we don't know are running. It's just, so the same way on a computer, this is more the hardware. The subconscious mind is more like the hardware of the computer. So we have these thoughts and programs and things going on, beliefs going on in the subconscious mind, basically running in the background and we're not aware of it. Now, if you do control alt delete on your computer and you go to your task manager and you look at the processes that are running, there's a lot of things running in the background of your computer that you're not aware of. I know when I do that, I'm always like, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that's for. Like, what is this program even running and what is it? What is it doing? And there's a lot running in the background. Now, 
a computer expert. I can get my tech guy, my computer guy, and ask him. And he'd know most of them. And maybe some of them he'd have to look up. But he'd pretty much know most of them because he builds computers. So you can get someone that understands the hardware and be able to tell you what's going on in there. Now, the subconscious mind, the hardware of the computer, this is where the ego will embed the mind virus. And the mind virus I'm speaking about is the ego game of opposites. It's a virus designed to keep you feeling stuck. It ke it's the, responsible for the majority of our super stuck patterns. It's responsible for all of our self-sabotaging behaviors. And it is, it's, that, it's that part of our mind, that subconscious mind, the hardware that actually holds our real solid beliefs. And the beliefs that we hold in our subconscious mind aren't necessarily true. And the beliefs we hold in our subconscious mind are an accumulation of our programming, different thoughts that were given to us over the years that we've kind of gathered as evidence and then created this belief in our mind as what we think is true. So the subconscious mind believes it. The subconscious mind believes it's true, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So my, one of my core subconscious beliefs growing up was I'm not good enough and nothing I do is ever good enough. When I became aware of that conscious, subconscious belief, I brought it into my conscious mind. I became aware of it. So it, became into, it came into like more of the software running in the, in, the, in the forefront. I could actually see it, sense it, know it, start to witness where it's actually influencing me and start to make a different choice around it and start to unwind and clear it. Now, that has been a process of many, many, many years. And that's been the process to actually change the subconscious programming. It takes time. It takes effort. What if there was a quicker way? What if it could happen instantly? This is what I'm seeing with the ego game of opposites. Instant shifts instant healing, things that have been super stuck points for me for a long time that I've unwound. They're, they're not as big stuck points as they used to be, but they're still there. They were still there running in the background. And with the ego game of opposites, I've been able to instantly shift them and they're gone. They've disappeared. We quarantined them, we deleted them and reprogrammed the mind. So let me explain a little bit about how it works in the mind. On a conscious level, we have desires. So you hear and you know what your desires are. I can ask you right now, what is one thing you desire? Maybe it's abundance, success, uh, a relationship, a, a home, a car, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's material or otherwise. What's one thing you desire? That's in the conscious mind. You have this desire. Everything that you desire in the conscious mind is filtered through the subconscious mind. And everything that gets filtered through the subconscious mind then becomes the energy or the action and behavior. That's the outcome. So you've got the desire, the belief in the subconscious mind, and then the outcome in your life. Desires in the conscious mind, belief in the subconscious mind, action, energy, behavior comes from that. Now, if your desire and your belief are in sync, you will, the action and the behavior will lead to what you desire. I'll say it again. If your desire and your belief are in sync, they are in alignment. They don't conflict with each other. You will be able to bring your actions and behaviors to create what it is that you're wanting to create in your life. As long as that desire, I'm going to add something here because the ego is going to jump on this. As long as that desire is in alignment with spirit, it's meant to be on your path. It's guided. It will happen. The challenge is, is when your desire is different than what you believe is possible. So 
let's say using not good enough, my desire was to be, have a great impact on the world. That's one of my desires, my, my greatest desires was to have a great impact, a large global impact on the world, to help others. On a subconscious level, my belief was I'm not good enough and I'm not doing enough. So the behavior that that, that filter then created was I would over, over deliver, I would undervalue, I would push myself to the extreme measure, I would sacrifice myself to help others. And I basically would become, I became a workaholic. And what that did was it came at a sacrifice to myself and my health. I ended up with having cancer in my body. That was my brick wall. That was my hit the wall. I cannot give when I do not fill my own heart realization. I need to fill my heart and give from the overflow. It's essential. When I recognized that and I started to live from that place, everything shifted. But I still had that subconscious belief that I'm not good enough. So it was still there just playing in the background, but it was very subtle. It was very quiet compared to what it used to be. And it was maybe 10% left. When I played the ego game of opposites, it's disappeared. It's gone. I've had shifts on profound levels using this tool. So this tool didn't come from me. It came through me. It's from the divine. It's, it's a gift for all of humanity. And I'm just the messenger for it. I'm grateful to be the messenger. I'm honored to be the messenger. And at the same time, it's really clearing all the little leftover dust bunnies in my own subconscious mind. I'm clearing my hard drive completely quarantining all of these small little thoughts and beliefs that are no longer in alignment or never have been alignment, most of them, and changing them. Now, with the ego game of opposites, I did the master class two weekends ago, like not this weekend, but the weekend before. And it's still free on my website. I, I will be charging for it soon because I'm recognizing that people need to invest in it in order for their ego to actually get out of the way. When it's free, that there's not, they're not as invested in getting it done. When I charge even a small amount, people will be more invested in actually getting their money out of it and using the tool and doing the masterclass. And at the same time, the ego is less likely to be able to convince you or distract you. And I'm going to put on a time that you have, you have one week access to it because again the ego is going to use distraction and avoidance and it doesn't want you to use this game the reason it doesn't want to use this game use this game is because it's actually really effective the most common thing i've heard from everybody that has done the ego game of opposites and that's within my community with my team as well as everybody who attended the master class and those that are listening to the replay i'm getting trickles of emails and people are telling me their experiences. And the one common thread that I've seen over and over again is I don't know if I'm doing it right. And I'm kind of confused how it works. Great news. This is great news because the reason that you're confused is the ego is using confusion to stop you from doing the exercise and thinking you're doing it wrong, judging yourself for doing it wrong. I'm not doing it right. I'm at, this isn't working. Anything it can do to keep you from doing this exercise, playing this game, because then it can thrive. It can continue to thrive. So it'll use confusion. It'll use, you know, the judgment. I'm not doing it right. This can't be right. I, I don't think it's right. Whatever it is, you're, right, you're on to something. Keep going. It's awesome. It's good news. <laughs> keep going. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep practicing. The other thing I'm seeing is the, I'll, I'll just let me backtrack a little bit around confusion. The ego loves to use confusion. It loves to make things complex and, and, and hard. And spirit is very simple. So this tool is actually very simple. And it's infused with such clear intention to heal the subconscious mind. It's infused with 
the divine energy that cannot be overridden by anything else. And it basically can clear and provide a deep healing in the subconscious mind in a way that I've never seen before. It's one of the most powerful tools I've experienced to heal the mind. One of the most powerful tools I've played with and used in all of my 25 years of doing this work to heal the mind. It is extremely potent and effective. The ego wants it to be complex. The ego wants you to convince you, to convince you it's confusing and can't be that simple, can't be that easy. And the truth is, it's not that easy. It's simple, but it's not that easy because the ego is going to stop you in any possible way it can to keep you from getting this. It wants you to quit before the miracle. It wants you to quit before the shift. It wants you to hold on to those subconscious beliefs that are overriding your desires. And when that happens, when you have a desire and the belief in your subconscious mind and you don't realize it's there, overrides your desire and you end up having these behaviors and actions that aren't in alignment with what, we, what you desire, it's a perfect recipe for judgment. The ego loves to judge. That's its number one go-to. Good projection and judgment, the two things that the ego uses most. So you're going to judge yourself. Why can't I do this? I know better. I know better. Yeah, you know in the, in the conscious mind, you know better. You know what you need to do. You know how to stop self-sabotage. You know how to stop emotional eating. You know how to lose weight. You know how to find a love relationship. You know how to be successful. There's a, there's a, a great knowledge that's in the conscious mind. So we think we know, but it's what we believe in the subconscious mind that overrides the knowledge in the head. The subconscious mind beliefs will override and, and basically delete those beliefs. You still have them in the conscious mind. You still want those things, but you won't be able to bring them into your life because it cancels it out. Your beliefs in the subconscious mind cancel out your desires. This is powerful. A powerful awareness and a powerful shift is available to you. So I love that you're here listening to this because this is going to give you kind of an understanding and a background. And then the process is actually in the mastermind class. And it's still free right now, so you can still go to my website and sign up for it. It's Heart Led Living dot com forward slash ego dash masterclass. You can also find it on the homepage. When you do the masterclass and you follow the step-by-step -step process, you're going to discover these beliefs, these ego dictionary definitions embedded in the subconscious mind. These ego dictionary definitions are not the definitions of the world. So let's take the world word intimacy. I'm going to be talking about intimacy in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned on this one. Physical and emotional intimacy and the experience, the male and female experience of that, the, the difference between men and women and their experience of physical and emotional intimacy and connection. I've, I've known about this for a long time. I've worked with couples. I've done a lot of counseling for couples and stuff. But what I realized in doing the ego game of opposites with my husband around intimacy, a whole other level of ego dictionary definitions around intimacy that are very much tied to the feminine collective and the masculine collective. So there's inherited beliefs that we have around these things as a, as a woman or as a man. And then there's the beliefs that we sort out and we kind of create over our, our life based on our experiences in our lives. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing a full episode just on that and talking about the ego game of opposites around intimacy. And if you are in a relationship or you're interested in being in a relationship with an opposite, you know, person of an opposite, and not even that, it can be same-sex couples too, because 
when we understand each other and we understand our relationship to intimacy and we can have these deep conversations, then we're actually able to bridge the communication and get ourselves back on, on a, on a, not this, it's not going to be the exact same page, but on a page where we can actually connect and relate to each other, or we can have a greater understanding for each other. And when we have an understanding for what the other person needs, we're able to actually meet their needs in a different way. And that's what's happening in my relationship. My husband and I have been together for gosh, 18, 19 years now. And we are stronger than ever and more connected than ever. And we actually had these huge shifts in the last month around intimacy. These patterns that have been playing out in our relationship over and over again shifted completely and opened up like a whole new level of conversation around it. I actually asked my husband this morning if he'd be willing to go on video with me and just share some of the experiences from his perspective as well as mine so that we can actually help educate and inform and empower couples. And normally my husband's not all that keen and on the work I do or participating. He's kind of a good like background kind of guy. He's a solid foundation, you know, holding space behind me, standing beside me, but not on, not in camera, not, not in the field. And he was actually open. So that was a miracle. I was, I was celebrating that. It was really cool to hear. So stay tuned. I'll be sharing more about that. In the meantime, let's look at how the ego game of opposites can heal your subconscious mind and change your relationship with anything, any aspect of your life, any super stuck points that you have, any patterns that keep repeating themselves over and over again, even though you know better, even though you think you, you, you should know better, all of these things we can change and self-sabotage as well. And then I'm going to explain after the break, we're going to take a short break, but after the break, I want to also explain how the ego game of opposite, the, these ego definitions actually come in clusters that create even more of a challenge for people to unwind. So they become a bit like a rat's nest. So that's what's happening as well in the mastermind classes. I'm seeing some of the participants coming into this place of confusion and saying, you know, I'm not, I'm kind of feeling a shift, but not a big shift. I'm still feeling stuck on this. And then there's another word that comes in. I give them another word and then they get into that. And then they get another word and then they get into that ego game of opposites. And then all of a sudden, kapow, the shift happens. So there's these clusters that are happening as well with the ego dictionary definitions in the subconscious mind. There are more than one virus, if you want to look at it that way, or it's a virus that's kind of feeding into a couple other uh, stuck points and creating a bit of a rat's nest around it. So we're going to take a short break, and then I'm going to share more about that and give you more information on how you can start to really look at the subconscious mind so that you can align your desires and your beliefs and create a life that you love and love the life that you create. We'll be right back. The Heart Led Living Intuition Academy with Sue DeMay is a unique unschooling experience designed to unwind, clear, and align your intuitive channel. And the doors are open for you now. Experience unwavering faith and deep trust in your intuition as you strengthen your connection to source, allowing you to walk through every moment with more peace, confidence, clarity, and certainty. Experience this deep personal transformation with Sue's guidance, including the option to share what you learn as a certified intuitive coach. This is your time to unwind and reprogram your mind, to rebuild your foundation and realign with your intuitive heart. Enrollment is now open. Apply today at heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Again, that's heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Welcome back. Today, we've been talking about how to heal the subconscious mind and stop self-sabotage instantly. I am your host, Sue Dumay, and this, you're listening to Life by Divine. 
If you're just joining us now, I would encourage you at some point to go back and listen to this replay. And even the last couple months of episodes, the last four to six weeks, I've basically, maybe even eight weeks, I've been talking about the ego game of opposites and the ego mind hack and this virus that's been embedded in our subconscious mind. And the way that we can actually, the key, the recipe, the, the gift of the ego game of opposites to be able to quarantine and delete this old programming so that we can reprogram the mind so that it's in alignment and in sync with what we really desire in life. When we look at the, the mind, when we look at the subconscious mind, I talked about the idea of the dictionary of terms. So when we look at the world dictionary, you can look up in Google, you can look up a dictionary, I'm sure there's a dictionary.com, whatever it is, and look up a word in the dictionary. And you will find a word, let's use the word intimacy for a moment, you will find the definition of intimacy. When we expose the subconscious mind and bring forth what the ego's dictionary definition is, that programmed hidden virus in the mind is a dictionary definition that the ego created based on fear, based on your experiences, based on trauma, based on your history, based on the feminine and the masculine collective, based on generations of people that have come behind you, family, everything can be all embedded in that dictionary definition. When we start to actually expose and bring that into the light and show you what's programmed in the subconscious mind, it will blow your mind. When I do the ego game of opposites and I share the definitions that come in with my husband, sometimes his eyes go really wide. Sometimes he's like, he's shaking his head like, I cannot believe that's in your head. Like, I can't believe you believe that. And I said, well, I don't believe that anymore on a conscious level. But apparently I still have it programmed in the hardware of my mind, in the subconscious mind. And the moment we actually get clear about the word and the definition and I expose it and bring it into the light, and then I look at what is the opposite word the ego's using to play against each other, those two words coming into the light of awareness, we have the ability to heal them. When we can see and know and understand and witness what it is that we believe in the subconscious mind, we're quarantining it, and then we can choose to heal it and delete it. And when we do that, then we create space. And then we have a new word definition that comes in. And that word, we actually ask spirit, the divine God, the universe, to give us the new definition for that word. So we don't even go to the dictionary, the world's dictionary definition, because that's still limited. The world's dictionary definition is still limited by our human mind. So what we're tapping into is more of our higher consciousness, our soul, our spirit, God, the universe. And those definitions are juicy. Those definitions are heart scrubbing. Those definitions are mind clearing and mind freeing, mind blowing. Those are the new definitions that we are choosing to replace the ego dictionary definitions with. And those are the new definitions that we are actually choosing to embody on all levels, in all dimensions, in all timelines, across all generations. So it's a powerful process. And it's working on levels, not just the mind level. It's actually working on so many levels that you can't even comprehend it in the mind. The mind is too limited to even comprehend what's happening. But the beautiful thing is this process is designed to bypass, to, to go into the mind and use the mind in a way it needs to. But at the same time, there's so much happening in the background of it and the energy and the healing potential of it is so, and my intention is so clear around it that there's so much, it's working on so many levels. It's actually clearing and healing on so many levels. And we're actually freeing past generations. We're freeing past life anchors. We're freeing spiritual contracts. We're, we're clearing and healing so much, so much on so many levels. 
That's why people are feeling big shifts. Now, I'll share one of my, I'm going to grab my journal here and I'll share one of the processes. So basically, I'm finding these clusters. I mentioned before the break, I'm finding clusters. So what'll happen is, so when I did unworthiness and worthiness, those were the two dictionary definitions that I played at first. And remember that those two dictionary definitions were kind of opposite, weird, wacky definitions from the ego. They didn't make any sense on, in the logical mind, but they certainly were playing out well in the subconscious mind. And they were playing both ends against the middle. They were playing opposites to each other. So those two words were playing opposite to each other and keeping me feeling damned if I do and damned if I don't. Then other words I went into, I'm just looking at some of the other ones. I did do abundance and lack and poverty and I did do judgments and acceptance. I did a lot. I played a lot of games, but let me look at the one that just recently I played. It was around, oh yes. Okay. This is what happened. I had a dream that someone was in my home and trying to steal my purse. And this is a common thing I've had for a long time. I've had my purse stolen before. I've had my house broken into twice, two different places we lived in. I've had that feeling of someone breaking in and taking something and, and I was it was, we had our truck stolen. We had lots of different things happening over the years with my husband and I. And what I recognized is every time it happened, I felt this feeling. And even with that dream, I felt this feeling of, uh, and I couldn't even articulate the word. There was a word that I couldn't capture, but the feeling was invasion or being intruded upon, or I definitely was taking it personally. And it felt like mm, being taken advantage of, violated. There was a lot of words tied up into it. And I was really searching for the word I needed to do with the ego game of opposites. So this was just last week. And what happened was I had a dream and I woke up from that dream and I felt so that I felt this feeling but it didn't feel as big as it used to be. So I know I've unwound a lot from it, but it was still there. So any resistance is an upset. Any upset or grievance is worth doing this exercise with. That's going to be kind of the pointer, the finger pointing to what's left over within you. Our dreams are often ways that our body kind of processes things subconsciously or points to things that are left over. So what that dream was doing was pointing to a leftover within me. And I'm one to not leave any stone unturned. I am not going to leave any leftovers. I will not quit before the miracle. So I am determined and I am willing to play this game full out. So I started with the words invade and intrude because they were the closest that I could identify to the feeling and resistance I was feeling inside of me. So it went into the, the ego game of opposites. And the first ego dictionary definition that came through was violation, unsafe, fear, live in fear, must protect yourself, be on alert, cautious, suspicious, be safe, protect your family, protect your privacy, your belongings. Fear keeps you safe. So you can see how the whole idea of invade or intrude is actually going to keep me safe. It's going to protect me. So I'm going to be invested in those feelings. I'm going to be invested in that experience somehow. I won't go through because it's quite a long one. The opposite word that the words that came in, what is the ego playing against invade and intrude and keeping me buying into those and that energy and trying to protect myself and keep myself safe and be on guard was protect and defend. Protect and defend came in and those, the definition that the ego had programmed in my mind is you are weak, susceptible, vulnerable, a victim who must defend self and others, can be attacked at any time. No matter what you do, you will always be vulnerable. You must be tough. You must be strong. Act tough. Don't let others in. Don't let others into your life, to your heart. It's not safe. It's too risky. So you can see how like it goes on and on. It's, it's crazy making in the mind. This is my, this was my subconscious mind my subconscious definition of protecting myself and defending myself. 
Now, of course, I'm going to, you know, if that, if this, if that's what it means, this is what I'm going to do. This is the behavior. This is the action I'm going to do. Even though my desire is to have my heart as wide open as possible. If I believe in my subconscious mind that opening my heart is too risky for my, for me and others, then of course I'm not going to do it. It's going to override my desire. And then the whole invade, intrude, protect myself, be safe, suspicious, cautious, all of those things used to really paralyze me. They don't so much anymore, but it was still playing in the background of my subconscious mind. So I quarantined those two things, created space for something new, and I asked spirit for a new word to, to define, a new word to replace those definitions with, one that would align with who I am in this moment, and who I choose to be in, in this world. And the words I got were divine light. And the words that came in there, the definition that came in is hold your light in love, not fear. No need to defend or protect. Stand in love and you will be a force of light that no shadow can enter. In your divine light, no darkness can exist. Can exist. All fear dissolves every time. Every time darkness dissolves into the light, your light expands and illuminates even more. Be the lighthouse, standing solid on the rocks, saying yes to all the elements, saying yes to transmuting all darkness into light. And it goes on and on. And as those words came in, I felt really clearly aligned with them. And I felt the expansion, I felt the shift. But I felt there was a niggling. I felt like something was left over. So then I asked, is there another ego game of opposites word that I need to do now? And the word came in God. I went through and I defined, I exposed the ego's dictionary definition of God. The, the opposite word the ego was using was belief. So I exposed the ego's dictionary definition of the word belief, which brought me to faith from spirit. And a, a new definition, a uh, realignment with the word faith. Curiously, I kept going. I went to another ego game of opposites. And I needed to look at faith. There was something about faith that wasn't quite clicking. So I went further and I did the ego game of opposites for faith. Exposed the ego's definition of it. The opposite word it was playing against each other was trust. So trust and faith were playing against each other. Trust and faith are meant to be married in this world. They were actually playing against each other. They were playing opposite. The ego was creating this game of opposites within those two definitions. So the new definition that came in was divine trust. And I could align with that. And that's where I had a cluster. And that's where that rat's nest I was talking about earlier showed up for me. And it's starting to, I'm starting to see it in more and more, more of the people that are going through the ego game of opposites. So when we can unwind these clusters, like this rat's nest of it, then the, the shifts are even greater. So we have these little shifts and then these big shifts that happen. So when I got to that point, I was like, I just felt so different. My energy expanded. My voice changed. I feel lighter this week. I feel more in alignment than ever before. I feel more on purpose than ever before. And nothing changed on the outside. Everything changed on the inside. And I feel this like click, something clicked on such a deep level. Like I really, like it just clicked and I got it really, really deeply on all levels. There's this full embodiment of divine trust. There's this full embodiment of faith. There's this full embodiment of those new definitions that came from spirit. And that's the miracle. That's, that's the shifts. That's the potential. That's even... That's even still scratching the surface, I feel, for people to be able to break these patterns that have been holding them back for so long in an instant. Now, the ego game of opposite takes about, the, on average, about 45 minutes to an hour to play. I've gotten it down. I'm, I'm really quick at it now. I, can, I did those three within an hour, I think. They came boom, 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 right after another. So in the beginning, it's about 45 minutes at least to play one game. And then if you need to do another one, there's a time sometimes of integration. So you may need to integrate that shift. And then what happens is you'll see how that pattern has shifted or changed. Where you might doubt or create confusion or 
wonder if you did it right, was if you feel the shift, and maybe it's subtle, and then the behavior comes in again. You see the behavior, but that's only because of the habitual mind. So I want you to see that. The shift happens, the healings happened, and the habitual mind will come in with those same thoughts, those same kind of things that would keep you stuck in that cycle or running on that hamster wheel like before. The difference is it doesn't have the stronghold it used to have. It doesn't have that uncontrollable self-sabotaging, I cannot override this behavior. It doesn't have that anymore. It doesn't have the stronghold anymore. So you can hear the habitual, habitual thought or the habitual pattern or the behavior. And in that moment, you can make a shift. So with Emotional eating, I mentioned one of my members have taken the, I did the Go Game of Opposites with her around emotional eating. She has not done any emotional eating since that Ego Game of Opposites, and it's been almost two months now, month and a half. And the reason for that is we, we got to the root of it and we shifted it. We, the Ego Game of Opposites, it only needed one game and boom, it was done. Now, the habit going toward food and wanting to reach for food, that's the habit. She's able to actually stop that habit now. She's actually able to make a conscious choice in that moment not to have the food, not to, to say no to those things and to say yes to her health or to say yes to, to shifting that behavior. So the behavior is no longer controlling her. The mind is in alignment with the desire to no longer have emotional eating. It's the habitual mind that she's now just shifting and it does not taking much effort. And, it, and it's not that uncontrollable urge anymore. It's like that. It doesn't feel like the addiction anymore. The addiction's shifted and changed. This is the power of the ego game of opposites. Healing your subconscious mind will Free your mind in ways I can't even begin to explain. And it'll be different for everybody. The feeling of freedom, the experience of freedom, the results, the, the outcome, the external mm, shift in your environment that'll happen. Once you shift that internal environment and align it with your desires, consciously align it, genuinely, authentically align it, then you're just going to take off. You're just going to fly. You're just going to, like your life is just going to shift in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. Now saying that, the ego can jump on that and loves to hijack things, right? So one of the phases of the ego, that one of the stages of the evolution of the ego is the hijacking ego. So the ego will hijack manifesting. It will hijack creation. It'll hijack you making things happen in life. So that's where I go back to, instead of living life by design, meaning I'm doing it, me personally, I'm doing it, I'm making it happen. That's that personal aspect that the ego loves to jump on. We shift to life by divine, which is allowing the divine to work through us and allowing what's meant to be on our path to come through and be, to come into fruition. So we're active in that, in the way of taking inspired action, following the guidance from within, following our inner spirit as our teacher and our guide and taking the step that's in front of us that we're meant to take at that time, as opposed to, okay, let me figure this out. Let me get this going. Let me run with this. That's a heady process. That's, that's the ego's domain. The ego loves when we do that. And it's more of a heart married with the mind. So the heart is actually in the lead. The heart is driving the head is in the, dry, in the passenger seat, or maybe even the back seat, enjoying the ride, going along for the ride, playing the role it's meant to play. The mind is actually meant to be the passenger. And the heart, your spirit, your soul, is meant to take the lead. That's what's meant to happen now. Life by divine is allowing this beautiful divine force, this force that is all part of us. We all come from the same force and source. We are a unique expression of it, playing an essential role as a human, having this experience here on earth. 
We are all here to contribute to the healing of the whole. And our role, the part that we're playing, when animated, when brought forth through the divine, we become a force so powerful. I always say what used to work is no longer working. And what used to be needed is no longer needed. We actually can do way more now. What one healer can do what used to take 10 healers to do. There's, there's shifts happening on, on a global scale and there's more and more light workers waking up. And that's why I'm, I've started the Intuition Academy and started mentoring light workers and, and healers and coaches and conscious individuals that are wanting to wake themselves up and align with the gifts that they're meant to extend in this world right now. Whatever that looks like, whether it's a book or whether it's a business or whether it's healing energy or whether it's as a practitioner, whatever it is, is being able to clear and unwind all the ways that the ego's blocking or stopping or embedding fear so that you can open up that channel and become the clearest most powerful intuitive channel here and now that's what the world needs that's what the calling is in your heart and that's what i'm here to do each week in these episodes through my website whatever way you feel to connect with me through the membership whatever you feel in your heart just follow that heart nudge and if it's not me there's someone else out there that's meant to support you and and help you and guide you Say yes to the support. Say yes to the love that's all around you. It's purposeful right now. We're all in this together. We all need to wake up. We all need to wake up right now. All of us. And those that are still asleep at the wheel and resisting are actually suffering a lot. And they need our support. They need our love. We need to meet them with love. The Care Bear ego and ego hijacked disguising itself as love is not serving. It's actually extending more fear. People pleasing, that's sprinkling people with, with fear. Caring in the form of worry, that's sprinkling people with fear. There is a way to clearly align with love. And there is a way for you to discern, that's divine discernment. How is the ego embedding fear in my life? How is it showing up? However subtle or however obvious, our intention, my intention, is to help as many people as possible wake up fully to the point where they can be in alignment more than not. And when they are in alignment, their ego's dissolved. It's not playing in the background somewhere. It's not embedding fear somewhere. It's not disguising itself as love. I'm talking like zero, no ego. When you're in alignment, I want the ego to be dissolved for you. And my gift is to use my spidey senses. I'm very, my gift is very heightened and sensitive now, especially with the ego, because I've been studying it for over 10, 10 years now. I can discern and I can sense even the subtle niggling of the ego now. So my intention with these episodes and with everything else I'm putting out in the world is to empower you to be able to have that divine discernment for yourself. And then eventually maybe even have that divine discernment where you can actually help others. We are not here to be the superhero, one superhero. We all have our superpowers. We all have our gifts. We are all meant to wake up. And some of us need teachers and some of us will be the teachers, but we always must be the student first. We always must do our own healing first. And I'm beautifully willing so excited if you feel to join me and allow me to be your teacher in whatever capacity we are all here together in community healing there's a beautiful global healing movement happening right now just say yes to it say yes to play your part begin there and see what happens i love you i appreciate you i honor you until next week. Namaste. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. 
Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.